Hello, this is Rage Quitter, and this is episode 7 in the series Heavy Shield Skills. In this series, we talk about advanced techniques using the heavy shield, such as the insta swap, insta kill, spike drone, and in this episode, the concept of the tell. In this video, we will explain the concept of the tell as it applies to advanced warfare heavy shield defense. Then we will apply the concept of the tell to three examples of heavy shield gameplay to see how the tell actually affects heavy shield player defensive and offensive decision making. In every sport there are actions that can telegraph your movement to your opponent. This telegraph or tell for short is specific to the sport and also the individual. So for instance, if I was playing baseball, I would tell you to look out for the way the pitcher is gripping the baseball because that grip can tell you or let you know what type of pitch will be thrown. If I was in martial arts, I would tell you, hey, look out for your sparring partner's hips because a sudden shift can mean an oncoming roundhouse kick. If we were playing poker, I'd say, hey, if the guy across the table suddenly drops his chips, it might mean he has a good hand. So these are all real life examples of the tell or the sign to look out for in different types of competitions. Good athletes and poker players do everything possible to hide their tell because you don't want to telegraph your movement. However, in advanced warfare, the tell is specific and concrete. And since every player is bound by the same rules of the programming code and character animations, they can't cheat, they can't hide their tell. Everyone will show the tell in advanced warfare. So with time, everyone has the same tell. You, you, can actually, you can actually learn the patterns of advanced warfare tells with time. And the nice thing is that everyone has the same tell in advanced warfare. We're all bound by the same programming code and character animations. The difference between real life tells and advanced warfare tells is that the tell in advanced warfare literally happens in one single frame. So there, there is no time to think about and process when a tell is occurring to plan your heavy shield counter attack. In advanced warfare as shielders, we need to realize that tells do occur and with practice and experience develop the instinctual reactions to these tells to better anticipate enemy actions and to counter attack. Okay, now that we've talked about the concept of the tail, let's apply it to three specific examples of gameplay. Let's start off with the tail of the double jump. The double jump tail is easy to recognize because you'll see the opponent jump once and just as the legs come down, the tail will be the knees will bend and the feet will come up. In this example, the enemy attempts to double jump boost slam me a couple times and I simply boost dodge out of the way because I recognize the tail was occurring. When he tries it the second time, I just boost dodge off the catwalk and then swap to my overkill weapon to counter attack. Okay, and this next example is the boost dodge tell. And this tell is a little bit harder to see because it's only one frame and you literally don't have much time to react. The way this tell works is you'll see the enemy move the right knee or the left knee to the direction they're about to dodge towards. You'll see it on the freeze frame. In this example, I tried to boost dodge to my right into the corner to protect my right flank, and he simply reacted by counter dodging to my left. That way, he was able to attack my exposed left flank. And looking at the kill cam, you can see a better response for me would be to boost dodge to the door of the room. That way I would have better coverage and defense against both the left and right flank. Okay, on the final example here, you see the enemy straight ahead. He boosts double jumps onto the catwalk. And when I go to attack with the insta kill, he just simply jumps back down. So as I chase, he jumps back up. He doesn't want to get close to me because I've already gotten a couple insta kills on him earlier during this gameplay, so he knows to keep his distance. And he jumps down to try to attack. This is a smart move on him because from the low ground that he has a better angle of attack on my feet. If you remember from the spike drone episode, I talked about this verticality paradox, and to protect myself effectively, I actually have to over exaggerate the angle of defense and aim the shield very low to protect my feet. And now let's freeze frame right here, you see his gun lifted upward. This is the tell. The tell is either he's out of ammo and he's about to reload or he's gonna sprint forward or both. 
And I already know because he's close enough, the distance gap is close enough that I can uh, simply slide forward and insta-kill him. So I hope you like these three examples. Looking out for these in the kill cams will help improve your shield knowledge and that's one of the main things about being a good heavy shielder is watching the kill cam to know how you died to improve and to adapt for future engagements. I hope you enjoyed this episode and as always I'll see you next time.